we're looking for a way how we could solve our brown water problem. So, in essence, we're going to try to do seven to eight miles of water pipe in the next three years, each year consistently, and um, solve a lot of that those problems with the old pipes. So, um, I'll tell you what we've been doing since then, since that meeting. We have put out two engineering contracts. Um, one is for Blades Road, and another one is an overall evaluation of our entire water system and trying to figure out where we have the pipe that's in rough condition. We've done the preliminary estimates and we've come up with some plans. We've got the plans out for bid, and we do have two projects, actually three projects, that should be starting mid to late April. Um, they're phased in three different phases. The first one is Water main replacement phase 1A, and uh, let me still this. Still both actually. For <coughs> um, 1A, we had nine bidders for this project. It was an engineer's estimate of around 3638, somewhere in that area. The low bidder was KR Resendez, and that's for $2.8 million for that first section. And the first section is. Um, 3,500 lineal feet of 12 inch ductile lion pipe and 11,900 lineal feet of 8 inch ductile lion pipe. The areas that are going to be addressed are Porter Road, Harbor View Road, Harbor Heights Road, Allen Road, Greenfield Lane, Ford Place, Otis Place, Field Place, a portion of Hazel Ave, Meeting House Lane, part of Country Way from Ford Place to Pin Oak, and McDonald Terrace. And that was identified because we're moving so quick. Those are areas that we know um, have some old, old pipe. And we picked those areas by these first areas because we have, we had readily surveyed about, you know, survey information that we could turn over and get done quickly so that we could get this happening as soon as possible. Um, it's overall, it looks, we have good bids. It's, it's going to be a little messy, we'll warn everybody, it's going to be hard getting around town while this is all happening. Um, but it looks like a pretty good project so far, it looks like the price was correct. The second bid that we had was our Phase 1B, and that is going to be 10,680 lineal feet of 12 inch ductile lion pipe and 4,200 lineal feet of 8 inch ductile lion pipe. The areas that we're going to be doing, that's going to go around the Lighthouse. That's going to be Rebecca Road, uh, Lighthouse Road. It's also a section of Van Vinyl Road and a section of Hadley Road. The way we phase this project, um, obviously we've been driving everybody up a wall over there with our seawall project that we just finished. So just when you guys thought you were all set, we start doing the water lines. Um, what this is going to be is we phased it so that this is going to go up first around the lighthouse and around the lighthouse and Rebecca Road. It's going to be pretty tricky because it's really narrow. The streets are very narrow in that area and there's a sewer line and there's a gas line also, not to mention the water line. So what we're going to do is we have the contractor is going to be running a temporary water line around the area. So it'll actually be a plastic above ground line that will be set up around the area and that will provide everybody their water. And in turn, he can take out the old line, the location where the old line was, and put the new water line in. That gives him a little more flexibility where the uh, water lines are themselves. So that will be happening. We That will be the first place where they're going to stop. That contractor has, I think we gave him until July 1st. Our idea was to get that completed by July 1st. That's what we're shooting for. Um, so we hope that phase is in correctly. The other area that we're doing after that would be in vinyl. In vinyl cannot start till school ends because obviously if there's a school there, we don't want to be ripping up the road and creating a lot of havoc as people are coming in and out. And then that will go on from there. And Hadley Road, he'll be all set to go. Our thought process was to get each contractor on these bigger contracts to bring in two different crews so that these crews could work simultaneously. So the way it could be is with these two projects going at the same time, we could have four water crews working in town at the same time. 
doesn't sound like much, but uh, if you remember about three years ago, we were doing Tilden Road, and we were also doing Stockbridge, and everybody was looking like it was the end of the world because we couldn't get from one side of the situation to the other. We're going to have the same situation going on at the same time. And there's also going to be times when we're making tie-ins to the existing pipe, or the contractor is, and it's going to disrupt the flows and cause, cause brown water. Um, and you can blame Jimmy for that one. We'll, we'll leave it to no, I'm kidding. But we will be seeing a lot of that. So that project is going to be done by um, SB General Contracting. We put out a bid. We had 10 bidders. And SB came in at 2.7. And I think our engineer's estimate was around 3.4. Does that sound about right? About 3.4. So we're, we're pretty happy with the price. Um, the next highest bidder, that low bid price was $2,733,740.88. Our next bidder was $2,792,688.55. So it's a difference of roughly $50,000. So um, so we were thrilled with, with that, getting that price in there. That's a very competitive bid, and um, I, I think we're getting a really good deal for that. So those are the two main projects we have going, um, water mains. Our third project that's going to be going is going to be going on in Glades Road. It's going to go basically from Glades Road, right by the post office at the corner of Bailey's Causeway, all the way to the end, uh, the end section where those gates are. We chose this line, this area here. We knew we had some bad pipe in that area. <coughs> the pipe is from, you know, early 30s, late 20s. And what we're going to be doing is we are getting money from FEMA to redo the roadway there. The roadway was damaged during some of the storms, so we don't want to repave the road and leave an old pipe in the ground. So we figured we'd kill two birds with one stone. We'd replace the water pipe and then get FEMA to pay for 75% um, of the new roadway. So um, we've done that. We've also notified the gas company. We had a meeting with them yesterday and we had a meeting with them about two months ago just to explain where we're going to be working so that if they need to do any replacements to their gas line, they can do it prior to us pay, uh, paving the roadway. Um, if anybody does have a gas service that they are thinking of switching over to gas or updating the gas service or anything else, I would suggest you do it sooner if you're on one of the streets that we're going to be doing, because after we pave a roadway and the roadway is complete, we have a moratorium for the next five years where it costs you a $5,000 fee if you wanted to go in and cut the road to change over to gas. Um, and, and that's where we've been. Um, we're continuing with our engineering program and we're going to uh, continue working with the water department and figure out what pipes we'll be doing next year, but our first priority is to get this all started and um, start getting shovels in the ground. The biggest holdback, like say at the lighthouse, and we also have some temporary lines going on Allen Place, some of these smaller streets, is weather. Um, we don't want to reroute everybody's water in April 16th and all of a sudden have a flash freeze and have everybody lose their water in these areas um, because they will be above ground pipes. So that's something we'll be judging. The contractor could start the work. It depends how aggressive they are in starting it. Um, and it depends on how quickly they can turn around their bonds and get us their bonds and uh, get the work started. So um, we have a map up here of the streets on the main projects, the A and B projects of where it's going to. And do you want to say anything, Sean? Did I miss anything? Or, no. Uh, we could open it up to questions and answers and whatever we can do to uh, talk to people. So they're going to start probably more like end of April, mid to late, and then first thing they do on Lighthouse is lay all the temporary pipe the whole way around the loop, mm -hmm. so that's going to take a while. Then they'll dig up each, like go to each house and dig up. No, the, the plastic pipe will go very quick. They okay. can probably do uh, all of Lighthouse Road in a day. It's just plastic pipe. It's probably a four-inch plastic oh, pipe. Oh, for the temporary. Top for the temporary. Oh, okay. Yep, and then they would stop putting the line in. It's okay. it's the contractor's choice. Um, once we award him the contract, if we award him the contract in April 15th, and he's, he wants to get started, and he wants to insulate those lines, he, he can insulate those right. lines if he wants to stop the work. As long as they don't freeze, if he would put the onus on him to right. you know, keep them flowing. And they're not going to freeze just just because you hit 32 some right. night, because there'll always be water flowing through them. Yeah. Um, 
so it's it's pretty quick and usually they, they tie into the spigots at the side of the house and feed the water that way. So which direction are they going in? Will they do lighthouse and go all the way around or how does that work? It feeds? It's going to fall on the contract oh, okay. of how they want to do it. So we don't know that, yeah. We don't know. We'll okay. have a pre-construction uh, pre meeting with him, okay. and he will explain how he wants to do it, because technically he could start with two crews and do one on Lighthouse, one on Rebecca, and do the whole thing over. And after that pipe's all connected, then usually what they do is they come back with service crews that make the tie-ins from the main pipe to everybody's right. house, and they do the replacement on that. But is it going to be a situation where to get the Lighthouse, we're going to have to go Rebecca, you know, like we may be. We'll work with the police, which um, yeah. Officer Gil Martin, Sergeant Gil Martin's here to, you know, uh, answer any questions related to that. But um, we had meetings with the police and fire and brought everybody involved into the different areas where we'd be working. So, uh, so if we're out of water, it's only going to be where our own tie-in is on. Um, actually, when you'd be out of water, and they would they would give you notification probably a day in advance at least. If they were, one of the things we have on, on Lighthouse and Rebecca Road is there's three gates where that comes in, you know, right where that little triangle island is mm -hmm. in the entrance. The water line's actually an odd, it comes in in an odd direction off Jericho Road. Mm -hmm. So what they're gonna have to do is go out there and test pit it, find out where the line is. And we may shut the water off the whole point but a couple times because what we'll have to do is install brand new gates so that we'd have control of that water. Um, if the gates are all, the issue that we have is we can't shut them off and turn them on, so we can't keep your water, your water. Or when coming. it shuts down, we're going to be out for like a day or... No, you might be out for four hours, oh, okay. four hours, maybe eight hours in the worst case scenarios, okay. but I don't see it as a 24-hour period. And are they working weekends or just... No, Monday they're going to work uh, seven, seven to five is the work day, Monday through Friday. Oh, okay. They can't work Saturdays um, with permission from the town. We would allow them to work a Saturday if they were behind. Mm -hmm. We would even allow them to work at night if they were doing a special tie-in just to avoid inconveniencing everybody. Right. Okay. Well, we'll get notices. Like you, you should get notices. Okay. There'll be somebody from the water department working with the contractor. Okay. And um, hopefully it goes smooth. Excuse me? Knocking on our door. Or Usually what they do is they put a flyer. They'll have a, yeah. a piece of paper with a flyer and they'll notify everybody um, of what's going on. Will it be anything posted online so people can keep We're going to we're gonna try and keep everybody up to speed um, posting online. It's going to be tricky keeping up with everything because there'll be three different contracts going. We'll have a representative of the town on hopefully with each crew is what our plan is so that we'll have somebody watching it over. We might hire some outside observers to um, watch over and make sure that they're backfilling correctly and installing the pipe correctly. The area on Country Way, will that be on the even side or the odd side, do you know? The pipe yeah. itself? Yeah. Um, I can tell you. Let's look. She I tell you what, uh, why don't I can go through and I can ask some more questions and then I can have you come up and take a look at the plans. I can show you exactly where it is. We can even pin it down out in front of your house if you want. Okay. Oh, sorry. I just have one more question. The brown water, like our hot water heater, has had so much of that garbage in it with all the breaks out there. Um, are they making any provisions for, are they, you know, I guess we all just drain our own water heaters and get them repaired. It just seems like it's, <coughs> it's a never ending thing. It, but, it is a never ending thing. Um, there, there are no provisions okay. to, to redo anything in, in anybody's okay. house or okay. filter systems or anything to that effect. Okay. And our rules and regulation folks are not responsible for fixtures or anything that's Okay. It's, it's kind of a catch-22 because yeah. the, the water department's an enterprise fund. It's funded by you, the taxpayers. Right. And, exactly. You know, I mean, you could almost get it where they could replace everybody's <coughs> plumbing too, but, you know, you guys would pay for it. You know what I mean? Just with a really high water rate then it would yeah. be, it'd be a lot higher. So. Right. Um, I think by master in law, they put limits on yeah. to what extent they can do. Yeah, yeah of course, Kevin, uh, you and I met a while ago, so I'm pretty much up to speed on everything, but I do have a few questions. Uh, have you had any discussions with the gas company on... Uh, Were you late? You were late. <laughs> well, I'm kidding. Yeah, I, I said earlier, we met with the gas company. Um, we met with them actually yesterday, and we met with them about two months ago, going over the areas that we're going to be doing. And 
what areas they're reviewing their lines to see if they have to update their lines and what they have to do. Is that the question? Uh, kind of. I can tell, I, I can tell you, you right now, so those lines know. probably are as old as the water lines. Yep. Are there. Yep. And what they do is they have an evaluation system on how bad the lines are leaking, if they are leaking, or what material they're made out of. Um, and we brought this up with uh, Siobhan from the gas company yesterday. Um, and we brought, we had a meeting about two months ago with actually with the president of the gas company because we had problems with them and we went over the areas that we're going to be working. Um, and they're going to review them if they need to be repaired before final paving. Um, they will be. Some of the streets we're going to look at and see to what extent we have to pave. We're going to see what the roads look like after the water lines. Um, Sections of Country Way were just paved maybe about six years ago. So if we can patch those and maintain those roads in, in good condition, we will. We're trying to avoid doing full depth reconstruction on every <coughs> street because that takes out of the money that we have to redo the water lines. The more we can do, or the less asphalt we can do, the more we can spend on, on the water lines. The roads will be in good condition, but you know, if we can, if we can get around it, we will. If all goes according to plan, how long will we be on the plastic temporary? Uh, at Lighthouse? Yeah. In the Lighthouse? Um, okay. uh, our plan was, I think we estimated about eight weeks for that whole project to be log, stock, and barrel. But it all depends on how well it goes. They may hit, they may hit rock, they may have water problems out there. It could be, it could be a lot. Um, so I say eight weeks tentatively. And when you make the connection, right? you have to get on your side of the meter or my side of the meter. That's I think where you luck out. I think you're on our side of the meter. So I, I think you're on your side of the meter. So, so I think you so come, in. come in through a hose tap or something. Yeah. yeah. When you have the above ground lines, will the contractor build berms around them if you have to, to go over the driveway? They will. The they will. Yep. And you know, there's only one way in and one way out. When they have to work on that stretch, how do they? They're obviously going to have to close down traffic. And we'll work with the police. The police are involved, and the police met with all the contractors prior to um, the bidding phase, and we explained how they could come in and out of Rebecca Road. We might switch it around. Our thought is we would probably close the lighthouse area, open it to local traffic only, and reroute everybody, say, if they're working on Rebecca, route everybody, make uh, Lighthouse Road a two-way, and try to limit the traffic that way, and clean it up the best we can. We have a pre-construction meeting coming up with the different companies, and we'll go over that. We'll have the police and fire there. Um, the other handy thing in our past projects, the police have been great. Um, if there's a fire or an emergency or anything, they hear it right over their radio, right as it's happening. They'll call up, tell the contractor, hey, clear the trench out. We got a, we got an ambulance, we got a fire truck coming through here. They'll throw steel plates in the roadway. And it, it, it's, you worked out well in the past. And last, but one of the things he's, um, David mentioned something in his email about, are you planning on adding any extra hydrants or? Yes. Moving any of the existing ones and how do you um, figure out where they go? We have hydrants. When, when we get into that detail, I can show everybody these plans. Or anybody who's interested, and you can come up and see where the hydrants are located. They're all in the town right away, where they fall. So wherever the hydrants are picked, what we try to do is space it out for the fire department. I think it's every 800 feet we have, we're required to space a hydrant. 800, 500, 500. Um, 800 was the old. 500, we have to space a hydrant. So you'll have extra hydrants. I think you have them now about every 800 feet, if if that. Uh, getting, getting back to the gas line thing, uh, one, one of my concerns, and it has more to do with, with uh, the fire department I've been working with, the deputy chief working on it, but um, I want to be assured that every property out of the point has a gas flow limiter installed. The gas company says that they think they have them all installed. I just raise that as an issue. I mean, if you have any further discussion with them, but I'm concerned because of the old line out there whether in fact the, the gas limiter has been installed on in those lines and they are going to have to replace lines and obviously it would be far better to do it sooner rather than later. Uh, who, who have you been dealing with with gas company? John Murphy. Okay. Have you been dealing with anybody in the gas he, company? He's been talking to, uh, I think he said the president of the but maybe if you could maybe touch base with him to see what he's found out. Can't go over the president's head, but we can know I'm talking about. <laughs> no, John Murphy. If oh. Talk to John. Uh, if I talk to John Murphy, I'll mention it. But those are meters that are installed inside the house, right? They're, yeah, you know, like those are, these are installed right out of the street. Okay. Um, 
make it. If, if, there's a, if there's a meter that's sheared off, the, the limiter would snap in place and shut down the gas. Okay. Um, I had a call this morning from the high school, uh, from the life skills program. Every year we've had out the layoffs. Uh, high school students working on uh, cleaning the area, a little bit of painting, weeding, that kind of thing. They're talking about canceling the program this year because they are concerned that the, uh, the work will still be going on and they start up right after uh, July 4th weekend. What should I tell them? Tell um, them, come on in. You think you'll... Our, our plan was to have it completed by July 1st. That's what we're shooting for. There may be delays, but, um, you know, if, if there is a delay, I, I'm, a, I'm expecting, you know, mid-July that it's done. But we've put some... Uh, We've put some uh, wording in the contract that the contract hopefully is done by July 1st. But that, that's going to depend a lot too on the weather because we also weren't expecting it to be this cold, you know, this late. Um, we want to see the weather good before he starts out there putting his temporary pipe. Some are, some are residents that don't come down to say, well, maybe late April, mid May, something like that. But in putting in these temporary lines, it seems to me that you would have to have. Them, they had to get access into the house, is that correct? Um, no, because what they do is we tie them to the water spigot. They could, they could tie them to the outside water spigot <coughs> if there was one. Or, um, we have a list of posters that are shut off, so we'll, 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 we'll look at what the contractors do once they get to the last time. That's why I was asking if they could get to my first time. <coughs> right, exactly. Uh, This is going to be an eight inch line out there? No, it would be far. Yep. It's my understanding that if somebody wanted to put in a, uh, a sprinkler system in a, in a building, that it has to be at least a six inch yeah. line. Is that correct? Uh, well, you got me on that. What do you mean? Oh. A, a six inch is used for the hydrant. The eight inch is a distribution line that runs off to a lateral for a six inch for the, for the hydrant. I, I thought it was a four, but I mean the fire department was no more than more than us. That all depends on five flows. Hmm? That all depends on five flows. But on new pipes, it's usually a, it's usually a four. It wouldn't be a six for a for a house. I mean, you depending on the size of the building. You have more water for the right. complex. But around the point, I mean, that would be you don't have a house that would be that would need a six inch. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess my only other question right now is the fire hydrants. Uh, I know you're going to be leaving the old system in place, so the Hydrants would be active. Is there any is there any point in this whole project where the hydrants themselves would not be working? Yes. When we put the temporary line, the hydrants will not be working. But when the temporary line goes in, there are stubs off so you can attach a fire hose to the to the line, and that would act as fire protection. And obviously, if, if you can send us an email, you know, you know you can send one email to us. It's very easy to make contact with everybody out there. So if you, just, if you do that, then we can keep everybody up to date. Just like we did with the split, the we got with the White House. Yeah, no, we can keep you up to date. And um, you know, in some of these different areas, I mean, we could even meet with people every every other week or something to that effect, just to give an update on where we are with the projects. No problem with that. It's it's going to be tricky when when we get going because we're going to potentially have. Um, you know, six different water crews working all around town. And that doesn't include, say, seawall projects or regular town projects that were going on. And, you know, we typically have in, in the DPW and the engineering department, we have three guys. So we're gonna be bringing in some outside help to do overseeing of the, um, of the work, but we'll also be watching over those guys. So um, I'm <coughs> more than happy to meet with anybody or if anybody wants to come in. Um, like on Fridays, I you know I could update people on uh, every other Friday on where the projects are and, and what's going on. Yes, the uh, July first projected end date include is that what is July for, what is what is the, what constitutes end date for you? Is that paving on the road or is that just the contractor's out? No, the contractor will be out completed with the water pipe. What he'll do is hopefully have a temporary water a temporary asphalt patch down at that time. What we'll do is we will leave the asphalt patch in place. 
there'll be miscellaneous settlement over this. We know this from past practice. Um, we'll, they'll maintain that trench and then we'll probably wind up paving it either later in the fall or maybe even the following year. We'll let it settle almost the full year just to get it all cleaned up. Okay, and that would hold true for all these different projects this year and years following. Yes. You know, the pavement's going to be, you know, substantially later, up to a year later. Yes. Yep. Whatever area. And that's the same. We, it's what we did from the Squashka Pond down by the lights. Um, we also did it for Tilden Road. We did it for Stockbridge Road. And, and why we do this is, is we could... When we do these projects, we could replace the pipe, haul all the material away, and put all brand new nice gravel in and everything else. Um, and your road would be perfect, it would never settle. But it would drive the cost of the project up significantly. Um, one, you'd have to pay for the disposal of all the material that's in there. And two, you would have to pay for new material coming in. And um, I mean, it might drive the cost up 30, 40% by just replacing all the gravel. So by using what we have out there and kind of letting it settle, um, you know, it saves money for everybody. I, I, it can be a slight inconvenience, but. Well, I'm just thinking of think of the lighthouse project. So as you've noted, those roads are pretty narrow. So the the likelihood that the trench, wherever it ends up going, disturbing, you know, a substantial portion of that roadway is, I would, I would guess, is pretty high. So I'm guessing that a year later, when you go back out there, you're essentially going to be putting new pavement for that whole circle. Probably. Possibly, I, 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 you know, I'd have to look specifically at the asphalt plan plans, which I which I'm not looking at right now. Um, but it, it is it is possible. <coughs> we'll, we'll take a look at it and see see how it holds up. Um, our idea is to minimize the paving, but we know we'll be doing some paving out there. Right. Yes. Um, can you cover the dates for lights? Like when that was done. Um, that it, April to July. Well? It's no, it's because that's a longer section of pipe. Um, it's starting probably late April. It's going up to bid Thursday. And um, 120 or 180 days, do you remember? That contract? Yeah. No, because it hasn't gone out yet. But that July date was to finish the loop at the lighthouse, not that's necessarily right. to finish that whole phase that, that contract. Yeah, the blades, I'd, I'd have to look at the contract to be sure, and, and I don't have that information with me. I think it's, I think it's 180 days to finish it, finish that whole project. So starting sometime in April. Starting sometime in April, yeah. Yes. So all through the summer. And what's the plan for the road? It's pretty wide up there, so any concerns about it's only one way. We don't have a loop, so we're assuming that's covered somewhere. The fire what we're going to do is we're going to leave the existing line in blades in place and active and keep that 100 percent active so there'll be no disruption to you you'll work off that same water line and they will run another line parallel to that other line and run the new line down because it is so wide and then what they'll be able to do is tie the services up and switch people over to the other line so we really shouldn't expect the road to be closed well, you know, we're, we're, during the day maybe but Right, we're not going to we're not going to close any roads for overnight unless this crew's working. But what we will probably do is, in our pre-construction meeting, we thought it was important that the contractor knew that they should start if they start in April, early April, late April, early May. What they should do is start at uh, Bailey's Causeway and get down as far as they can, you know, get down as far as they can from there with their main line and work their main line in that way. So um, I don't know if that helps here. Oh no, we're just concerned that there's that the road is open to fire and ambulance. The road will always be open to fire and ambulance. And then what about Tilden Ave? Um, Tilden Ave, uh, we've been working with Bill to get um, easements from everybody. It's a it's a private way, and we were looking to clean some of that area up. But what about the temple? Like, would that be? That's not very wide. So what would well, I'm I'm assuming when the contractor goes down Tilden Road, um, it would be closed. So then, what's the fire department access? I'm just concerned about safety. I, I, I can park yep. out on the window. No, road uh, understandable. Down. If the fire department is coming, if there's a call for an emergency, there'll be a police detail with the contractor when they're working. So, for example, if they were on Tilden Ave and they had all of Tilden Ave dug up, and somebody called for an ambulance or a fire engine or police help, um, the detail officer would notify the 
contractor, if there's an ambulance or fire engine or whatever coming down the street, what they usually do is keep steel plates with them. They would put steel plates over the trench in the fire apparatus and everything else to be able to go right over the, right over the plates. By the time they get there, they'd have the trench closed. And um, past practice, that's worked out pretty good, hasn't it? It works very well. Um, we had that on Hollett Street, which was tight, and we also did it for the bus route. So we get to the point where people call ahead of time when a school bus was coming in, and then have the trench all covered up and allow a school bus to get through. So we've dealt with it and it worked out pretty well in the past. And I'm hoping Glades, where it's wider there, we might have limits on the parking, where people park in the road there, especially down by the condos, where it'd be tight, we might have no parking in that area where the contract is going through, but that's probably the biggest, uh, biggest thing we'll be dealing with. Help. Yes. Uh, the possibility of six crews working at the same time. Who's going to be doing the inspection for the town? Will it be town employees or is it representatives of the engineering firm? It's it's going to vary. Um, we will have some town employees out watching over the site. Uh, we'll have some water department employees with it, and we'll also have some from some different engineering firms. We just put an RF out which we contacted about five different engineering firms and asked for prices to uh, for them to provide um, an engineer to oversee any of these projects that we have going if we can't manage so ideally we'd like to have somebody at each uh, each with each group just to be watching over one of the requirements we have is <coughs> compaction that we make sure we have a 95 percent compaction which which is great because there shouldn't be any deflection in the roadway when it's done the biggest problem we've run into is some of the material that we have in the road is um, is clay. We run into a lot of clay, and that compresses and, and heaves and everything. That's why the roadways are a little it takes a while to settle. And they're not bringing in special fill. For there are there are areas where they'll have to bring in special fill. If we run into peat or any material that you just can't use, we will we'll pay them extra to haul it out and bring in the material. And. Um, the pipe that we're using on a lot of these areas, the pipe like down the glades, around Rebecca and the lighthouse, it's a duct line pipe, which is a steel pipe. It has an asphalt coating um, on the outside. The inside has a cement liner, and then it also has asphalt on the, uh, an asphalt coating on the inside. And on top of that, these pipes are actually in, they're bagged in like a plastic bag to help prevent um, deterioration from the salt water um, and to help them last longer. Right now on Surfside Road, we just replaced a pipe out there for the Musquashka Pond that was a uh, cast iron pipe, and I think it was 105 years old, and it was still intact. That's That was being exposed to salt water and everything else. A new ductile iron pipe is supposed to uh, hold up a lot better, and we're hoping with the bags we get another 105 years out of it. Fingers crossed. I won't be yet. We won't need to worry. <laughs> but that's the plan. When we're, when we're putting the pipes in, we're we're using, um, you know, we're trying to use the, the best stuff on the market, so they last up. The cost of the pipe compared to different pipes is minimal when you consider the installation costs, the police detail costs, and you know the roadway costs and restoration. So um, that's the way we're going. I'm sorry, I keep missing it. That's all right. Um, I have a question, and it's not, it, it's in an area that you haven't discussed. Um, I'm assuming that your projects, I mean, this is an enormous project, but you're looking at areas um, of where pipes are most in need of replacement. And how far out can you project, or could you tell me, First Parish Road across from 3A, um, there's old You're on my list. Is that where you are? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You are on our list. Uh, that's, we've, we've actually got plans drawn up um, to come down Maple Street from the tank because the water tank's right up the top of Maple Street at that section of First Parish. And we're looking at that. There's, there's actually uh, two pipes on that roadway. There's one on the right side, one on the left side. Mm -hmm. one, one pipe is, I'm going to guess, and Jimmy can correct me if I'm wrong, one pipe was put in the 50s. It's a transite pipe that runs down one side. The other pipe was probably put in 1910, um, and that's ballpark guesses for me. And what they did is when they put the new pipe in in the 50s, granted it doesn't sound all that new, but they didn't take all the old services off that old pipe. 
they left the pipe in the ground there. So we know we have an old six inch cast iron on one side, and then we also have a transite pipe on the other side. So we're looking at that and we're gonna make an evaluation because um, we think that probably the whole line should be replaced and put what about um, see, what about Maple First Parish from Maple to Grove Street? That section right in there is um, is that when you're talking in that area, are you talking just Maple Street or are you talking First Parish Road? Um, I think it does go to Grove, but I'd have to look at it at a map to tell you exactly what, and, what the pipes were. And when you're talking water pipes, are you talking is that drainage? No. Nope. It's so those drainage will not be. Um, Replaced. This is just strictly water pipes. Okay, because those are substantially old, also. Am I correct? I mean, they could be very old. And, and what to do is, if, if you are having problems with the drainage, mm -hmm. contact the highway department, um, which is at 66 Captain Pierce Road. Um, give them a call and let them know that the the water pipes are. Oh, not the water I pipes, think it's kind of well known. If you if you live in that area, it's kind of well known. Yeah, but I mean, you know what? It, well it, might be, to it might be well known to you and to everybody else. But we go out and we line up the drainage products. Okay. Projects. I haven't had any complaints there besides from what you told me. So if people don't call. We don't know. Okay. And the last question is, water. Another water main up there. Will that be replaced, or is that considered a problem? That's something we're going to look at. It's in the evaluation. I know. Um, I know replacing down down along that section of First Parish, there's a section there that we want to replace mm -hmm. um, coming from Maple. I believe it's part of, is it down Maple or is it all down First Parish? Do you remember? We have some plans drawn up for that. Yeah, that was from Grove. From Grove all the up way down. First Parish. Up yeah. First Parish. I believe that's on our list. Do you have any ballpark time on this or? Um, and that's probably, is that unfair to ask? Yes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm thinking. Um, I, I'm thinking it's a possibility for next year's projects. Okay. Um, it it depends. What we're looking at is that that may seem like a horrible pipe, but we may have we may have worse pipes, yeah. and that's part of the engineering evaluation. What they do is they do they do flow studies. They're actually out mapping all our hydrants, and they're trying to map a lot of the pipes and a lot of our gates. So. Um, are you, do you get a lot of brown water right there? No, I, um, no. Okay. It, then we're definitely not doing this. You're off the list, right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was wondering if you're on the highest side there. Molasses, is that brown? Yeah. No. <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, that's what we're going to look at. We'll look at everything. And I, I can't say for sure, Harmsa, because I don't know exactly where you are, but, but we are looking at everything. Um, we are aware that there's two separate lines on First Parish Roadway on, on that section of First Parish. And we've been replacing, we've been going backwards because we started replacing at the harbor and we've worked our way up from, from the harbor. We've come all the way up to about Ronnie Shones now at First Parish. And then we've also done Country Way all the way down to Mary Lou's, um, all, all the way down that whole section. And then I know from Ronnie Shones in the other direction, Country Way towards Greenbush, we have to do that whole section, and then one of the sections are, are in there. But that is the main distribution line from the tower. So um, I, I, we would like to do something there. And it, it's on our list, but where it rates in the list is, is what will come up next. Would you have any idea when Meeting House Lane would be done, that area? Yes. How about this year? <coughs> That's um, Meeting House Lane is on our contract 1A. So I'm glad you're happy about it when this trucks and stuff and everybody's ripping everything up. Yeah, I'm so sick of brown <laughs> sheets and brown towels. Okay. Uh, but it, Meeting House Lane is on our list for this year. Just back to please, since um, the road is obviously very wide out there, and I'm guessing they're going to be kind of near on the house side of the road. Is that where the pipes will go? Not the seawall side, the house side. Um, I actually think it's it's closer to the seawall, isn't it? Because the gas line's right by the houses. The gas line's right adjacent to the houses, so it's it's more in the middle of the road, I think, in the in the middle. I'm just sort of wondering, since I, it took me a few seconds to figure out how long 180 days was, uh, can we get the road cleaned up for the summer as much as possible, just so that you know, 
you know, if you can they'll, it. they'll be cleaning it up for you. No, I, well, no, I, but, I say that facetiously. But, 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 it's, um, but, you know, it will, will be. Everyone will be there for the summer. It's going to be so that it's cleaned up. You know, it's just passive, I guess. Passive. Yep, it took a beating this year. You can talk to the highway department. They're probably not going to spend a, a ton of money repaving the road if the contract is going to be coming and ripping it all off. No, no, no. But they'll do some cleanup. So that it's, you know, that you can drive down, yep. pretty much drive in a straight line with some zigzag thing. And there will be a lot of people now instead of on a road and a half, they're going to be on probably a single lane. So it's, yep. I just think we need some interim step in there to get us through the summer. Okay. I won't bother you. The front? No, <laughs> no, we're, we're here. To, we're here to work with everybody, and, and I mean, um, we say 180 days. I, I mean, they could be out of there in 60 days, lock, sock, oh, no, and barrel. No, 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 we're just thinking that we're talking about that it's going to be through the summer, and so everybody will be back shortly, and it's just going to be we're going to deal with we can deal with the mess, and that's fine. But. Yep. No, it was, a, it was it was a very bad winter, and, and I know. They did. They did do some patchwork, and everything got blown right out of there. Um, but I'm, 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 I'm pretty confident they can. They, they'll have that cleaned up. No problem. Do you have the hydrosulfate? I have. Hi are there any other general questions? In the yeah. Well, back to Countryway, just generally. Board place to pin up. That's phase one. Yes. Uh, then you're planning another phase for pin out to Ronnie Schoen, is that correct? That's correct. Any idea roughly when that would be? Or Hopefully next year. That would be next year? Yep. And during the time those lines are being worked on, will you be using the existing pipe while you're putting the new one? Yes. So the shutoff time will be fairly minimal? Should be fairly minimal. Correct. Unless they have the pipe. Oh, sure. That's which, the which unfortunately yeah. happens. Yeah. And, yeah. and what happens is sometimes too, when they're when they're going through there, is your your pipe will be going down the street, but on each pipe there is a copper service that comes over and goes to your house, that comes up and goes over to your house. Mm -hmm. And if they're putting the pipe over here, sometimes uh, the water department will go out and lay out to the best of their ability where that copper service is, but a lot of times it might be plus or minus a foot. If they're within a foot of laying out where that copper line is, they're doing pretty good from their old records from the 1930s. Yep. Um, now that contract is going to go by digging, and he's going to estimate where that is and try not to hit that copper line. And the copper line could be, you know, if it's an older copper line, it, it mightn't be as thick as it once was. So there, are, there is the potential to have copper services broken as, as they're putting that work in and, and repaired. And that's, that's common, so it'll take people out. Kevin, we may want to mention that we're going to be removing these pits for uh, about 17 properties on Glades Road. Yep. Yep, down on Glades Road, there are there are water meter pits right now that are up in front of the houses, and they're kind of a liability when we get storms like we do because they can fill with sand, get destroyed, and potentially take out a water service to somebody else, somebody's house. So what we're going to be doing is, I think there's 17 houses in the Glades area where we're going to be taking those out. And um, the contractor, through a through a plumber approved by the water department, will be changing out and putting meters in the houses, um, just so that we don't have that issue and don't have that mess out in the roadway. I don't understand, Kevin. Is the meter like right now? The meter is the meter might be up in the roadway. Oh. So what we're going to do is, yeah, there's 17 of them. We'll take those meters out of the roadway where they are now, and we'll actually put them in the house. Um, which, as a resident, it's it's a better it's a better setup for you because if that I'll just say for example, if the line broke between the meter in your in your house, say you would be responsible for all that water that leaked out. Where now? Is something that's underground. Yeah. It's underground. Oh, okay. We're not aware of it. a meter on the side of the roof. No, no. You some houses have meters in there. Most of the houses in town have meters in their house now. Yeah. And that just shows you where where the meter meter pit is. So the These meter that are on the street are under the ground. The yes. Yep. We can't see them. No, there's okay. a little steel a little steel plate. Probably okay. you'd have to pick up the plate and take a look at them. So they'll they'll be going away. We'll be getting rid of a lot of those. And, and removing those will, uh, will actually help the uh, roadway in the future, so we wouldn't have any infections in the roadways. Yeah, they can cause settlement in the roadway and, and everything else. Do we know? 
must be yeah, notified. Yeah, the water yeah. So the water department knows. I don't know if they've the notified everybody yet, but we'll arrange that with some homeowners allowed. They'll probably knock on the doors and let people know. Don't mind me. I'm just. I'm going to take a picture showing all the people that showed up. So when they ask me if we had people that showed up, I can say we had a roll call. But I might smile. Okay. Thanks. I think it'll be a joint effort with the water department, the contractor, uh, us to coordinate the I guess this whole idea of people knocking on the door, I think email or some electronic will probably work for most people. Well, what we'll probably have I don't is think my house is not, I don't think I'm applicable to that, but no one's got to knock at my door and find anyone other than the dog, so. No, that's fine. And what, what they'll do is they'll probably go with somebody from the water department. Um, I mean, just general communication about the project? Yep. Yeah. No, what they'll do is they'll come out with somebody and, and probably uh, we can go through Bill. Actually, you know what? I can get a, do we know those addresses? We know all the addresses. Yeah, they're on the bid plans. I can get Bill a list. I can email him a list. Or I think we're meeting we'll there for Monday. email system down there, Kevin. So if you've got, at least from, from 90 or 100 Glades Road down to the gate, we have uh, most of the people. I can send you a list tomorrow of the houses that need their meters replaced, just to give them a heads up. And, uh, uh, where Glades is a dead end, is there any um, runoff points or drainage? Uh, It'll be the hydrants at the end. Just the hydrants will blow the hydrants off occasionally? Yeah. Uh, one, I'll, I'll go back to Bill for one second. Yeah. Uh, I think we've got three maybe four of those um, those easements to go down Tilden Ave okay. to replace that line. Um, we're opening the bid Thursday and we'll be awarding the job in about a week. So I have to have all those back by that time. Okay. If I don't oh, have them. hand delivered, emailed or on mail, so. Okay, if I don't have them, we're, gonna, we're not gonna be able to do that section Tilden if we don't have easements to go down there, just to give you the heads up. Oh, absolutely. Can you let Bill know if you do or don't have it? Yes. I think we only have three or four. Email. Yeah. You don't get email me because I'm leaving tomorrow morning. What exotic place are you going to? Disney. Good for you. Hey. Yeah, well, Kevin, you and I talked about this before because I made a pit now at Hard Park. We need a source of water there. So if we take the pit out of so it, I don't care how, what it is, but it's got to be something. Um, I believe it was addressed. I, I believe it's addressed in the plans. That's all right. right. We talked about that. It's that yeah, it, we'll coordinate. We'll that, coordinate. The pit, that pit's control. not going anywhere. Yeah. The one in the island with the, they use for the spigot to water. We have to keep track of water on the cup of water. One last question about Country Way. I feel like an outlier here, but uh, there is a scenic path that has been proposed. Yes. To put down Country Way. Yes. Originally, the plan was to go from uh, uh, Monte Shone, I think, to Huey. Yes. And now I understand that from the activity on the water pipe, you're going from Fort Place up to Pedro. Is there any coordination going on between the work of the water department and preventing with the uh, scenic path as well? Any coordination with that activity? Yes. We, we were actually the ones that have looked at the pathway. Um, the engineering department has looked at that. That was mm -hmm. a CPC project that was voted a couple of years ago to, to install a path. We started the planning phase on that. We hired out an engineering and a survey company. They completed a survey for that project and we're looking at it and i'll be honest with you we haven't done a lot with it for well, the reason is we can't definitively say we're going to put it on the right side or the left side because one side it's very tight on the property line where the right of way goes and the other side we have a conflict with about 42 poles right. so um we kind of slow down on that we're not looking at that we're, we're because remember, we've only got a few people, so we're, we're more focused on the water lines at this time. So now. it's not going hand in hand. In other words, the path is going to be handled 
at the same time the water line is going to be? No, because you couldn't have two contractors working together. What what your tenant what you technically do is you would um, you would probably do the water line and then the following year come in and do the sidewalk and then the following year after that repave the entire road. In a perfect world, but um, we're having trouble wrapping our arms around which way to set that path, which side to put it on, um, and it may incorporate moving some of the roadway. Um, I don't think the electric company will come out to move the 42 poles like we asked. We gave it a shot, but I didn't get a, get a great response you back. With the water pipe, they could put the line underground and eliminate all the telephone poles. They could, but that charge us a big surplus for that because they'd have to switch all that cable out and go to a different type of cable, underground cable, and they'd have to go to secondary network valves, wow. vaults, and okay. it would be nice, though. I agree 100%. Um, okay. Love to do it front screen and all situated to get the Kevin on um, glades from the post office down to 100 <coughs> is there any way of cleaning up that sidewalk it, it's really a mess in, especially in front of the uh, condominium is, um, it, is it broken up or is oh it, yeah is it, a, is it town sidewalk or was it put in for the condos or what I believe to be signed town sidewalk but I'm not sure Okay. Or especially right in front of the uh, my light uh, condo, it, the, the walkway is almost impassable. As 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 the water line goes, there's no monies for sidewalks or anything else. It's just water lines. But um, you know, it's something we could talk about with the highway department. Um, no promises. The the sidewalk on Hadley Road's a mess. We've got a lot of sidewalks that need improvements. To be honest with you. Okay. Just a I'll call up the bill on the easement with you on the easements. Okay, okay, that's fine. That'd be great. Um, anything else or any other questions that we can answer, people? Florence, no, no questions, nothing? No, no. <laughs> we're just glad you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> we are too. We're, we're, we're very glad to be doing it. And we hope in four years that um, everybody's talking about how great the water quality is. I don't know if anybody's had a chance. Um, the water department does do tours of the water water treatment plant. If, if anybody's ever interested, um, that's something that, that's been done in the past. It's kind of a nice tour. Jimmy loves showing the place off because you really they really do a great job down there with uh, with the system they have. And it's, it's an older system, but they, they maintain it flawlessly and they do a really good job. It's usually the first and second week. First and second week of May. And, um, <coughs> So when you see the quality of water, they have the water in all different stages, and the amount of testing that the water goes through that comes out, you, you really appreciate the work these guys do. They, they do a nice job with the water. Um, it's just a distribution system that's old, and um, once that gets replaced, hopefully, uh, you know, everybody's real happy with their water. Anything else? All right, I can go over these plans individually. Yep, where are you looking at the lighthouse? Thank you very much. Thank you for coming.